the Nigeria we want, 2032. It is 30th of September, 2032. Nigerians are preparing for their 72nd Independence Day celebration. And the mood of the polity is elated and expectant. President Doshima Terzo Atsue, a world-renowned nanophysicist turned politician, became Nigeria's first female president at the age of 45, in a landslide victory the year before. After successfully serving as Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology since 2027 under her predecessor, her exceptional leadership capabilities and performance track record earned her the party ticket in free and fair primaries. Madam President is scheduled to deliver her State of the Nation address at 9 a.m. the next morning, highlights of which have been circulated in advance to domestic and international media houses. According to the Financial Times, the country has enjoyed nothing short of a phenomenal transformation over the last decade, driven by daring homegrown policies initiated by the former president and his cabinet of reformers since 2023. The economic growth trajectory now sees Nigeria ranked as 16th position in global GDP at USD 1.05 trillion as of 2031, the first African country to ever surpass the 1 trillion GDP mark in history. The country's economic strategy team is motivated by the fact that the aggressive fight against extreme poverty is yielding results as GDP per capita has more than quadrupled in just under 13 years. From, two, from $2,230 per capita in 2019 to $8,897 USD today. With inflation consistently under 4% for the last seven years. As a result, while reform efforts continue, over 100 million persons have already been lifted out of poverty as of 2030. With Nigeria's security challenges thankfully a thing of the past, the government's consistent investment of between 10% and 12% of GDP per annum on critical infrastructure for the last decade to bridge the infrastructure gap has yielded fruit. Amplified by significant private sector investments in power, seaports, airports, rail, roads, and broadband connectivity, Nigeria's competitiveness increased exponentially as productivity across the country in manufacturing for exports, agribusiness, across global value chains, and the services sector galloped leading to the creation of millions of new jobs from growing businesses across the six geopolitical zones. With the completion of several critical long-term infrastructure projects in the last two years, and its giant strides in its business and regulatory environment, Nigeria is undoubtedly the location of choice for foreign direct investment by global investors and is now consistently ranked the top three emerging market destination. Today, over 30 of the world's top 100 auto parts makers have production factories in the country. Last year, African countries imported $23 billion worth of cars and car parts from Nigeria, with many auto brands continue to make significant new investments Nigerian factories, including Tesla, Toyota, Audi, BMW, and Nissan. Five Nigerian commercial cities now have metros, 
and the Lagos Metro is Africa's busiest, carrying more than 12 million passengers daily. In addition, Nigeria now has about 600,000 kilometers of paved road network across the country, as well as active inland waterways. In human capital development indicators, Nigeria has made significant strides in health, education, and housing to achieve considerably remarkable improvements in just one decade. For health, life expectancy of an average Nigerian at birth has increased from 62.6 years to 71.3 years. Importantly, under five mortality rate of 1,000 births per child has decreased from 112 to 24. Maternal mortality has decreased from 917 per 1,000 to 117 per 1,000. With 95% of births now attended to by skilled health personnel, an over 110 increase from a decade ago. Today, Nigeria is one of the top five countries in the world in the use of technology in the classroom, particularly for teacher training and delivering of innovative education products to children in rural areas. As of now, undisputed leader in tech destination globally, Nigeria boasted of over 100 unicorns in the last two years due to its vibrant policy-enabled tech space that has continued to grow exponentially. And in culture, the country is now one of Africa's top five tourism destinations. After Nigeria's successful bid to host the next FIFA World Cup, there has been a significant inflow of capital into the country's sports value chain as a whole, as the excitement is palpable across the country in the Science and Technology Readiness for Frontier Technologies Index of 2031, Nigeria now ranks 38th in the world, thanks to enabling policies of the then Honorable Minister and her colleagues. It's first in Africa, having overtaken South Africa, currently 54 position, three years previously. The entire African region has benefited from the effects of Nigeria's economic prosperity as a result of a vibrant and maturing African continental free trade area, which has boosted intra-African trade to 36%. Global analysts have watched in amazement as Nigeria has come a long way over the last 10 years, becoming a textbook example of how an economy can turn itself around. What they have done is nothing short of a miracle, said the IMF chief in Washington last week, commenting on Nigeria's Q2 performance, which is set to propel the country to exceed the projected growth rate of 9% it had maintained over the last two years to enter the double digits by the end of 2032. How did they succeed where others had failed? our current reality. <laughs> One morning, about a month ago, I received a random WhatsApp message. It was just a usual forwarded copied message, which I typically wouldn't read. But for some reason I did, and I'd like to share it with you. And I quote, breakfast, copy, by Ademola H. Adipo. A while ago, I was in Lagos, going to a hangout. Ahead of me, a policeman stopped a lady on a bike, asked her to open her purse, started to rifle through it. I was upset. I wanted to intervene, but I was late for my meeting. I wanted to intervene, but I was scared. What if he shot me? I wanted to intervene, but I decided to mind my business. 
I felt uneasy throughout my hangout. My conscience gnawed on me. I told myself I had valid excuses. But deep inside, I knew I could have made a small difference had I shown more bravery. You see, that is how nations fail. We all look the other way. We all do nothing. We all give excuses to why. Sometimes it is because we are benefiting. We confuse our temporary gains for what is truly the important gain. Then our society crumbles. Then we all point fingers. Then we all suffer. And then we say, who built this place? All of us that look the other way. End of quote. As I reflected on this short note message, it dawned on me that this is the bad Samaritan in all of us. We are often quick to disparage, for example, the Nigerian police force, or to throw shade at the government, the elite, our corrupt leaders. However, I doubt there are many of us who can honestly say we have never looked the other way in the face of an injustice, even in our own home. As they often said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good women and men to do nothing. Likewise, I doubt there are many of us who would openly admit to being the perpetrators of injustices, whether perceived small ones or significant ones, in, for example, our place of work. We can't even admit it to ourselves. The problem is always with someone else. Someone else is wrong. Someone else is to blame. Someone else needs to change. Over the last six years, in the course of our business climate reform work, in addition to about 55 priority ministry departments and agencies, which are the focus of our work at the Presidential and Living Business Environment Council Secretariat, my team and I have related with and successfully collaborated with people from all arms and levels of government, including several hardworking public and civil servants, our reform champions across all state governments, and most recently one local government here in Abuja. We have enjoyed cordial and productive relationships with the Senate, the House of Representatives, the judiciary at both federal and subnational levels, all kinds and levels of businesses across the private sector. Nigerians in the diaspora, the media, organized private sector, NGOs, development partners, development financial institutions, as well as friends of Nigeria and members of the diplomatic corps. Interestingly, in the course of our numerous stakeholder engagements and interactions, negotiation reforms, preparing reports, receiving viral messages and comments that come our way directly from concerned commentators or through our report.gov.ng feedback portal. Not once in all that time have I met a single person who has ever admitted even to the remote possibility of playing a negative part in any way, shape, or form whatsoever with regard to any of the challenges in our business climate today. <laughs> yeah. In the face of it, no one is corrupt. No one extorts money or receives bribes from businesses. And no one gives bribes or offers inducements to circumvent the system or to derive benefits over their competitors. We lament bitterly about the systemic problems that affect us directly, but appear to have a total blind spot about our own possible roles, our own biases and erroneous mindsets, our own complicit behavior in creating or perpetrating these are different problems that affect others. 
a kind of indignant selective vision. Can we please have an honest conversation today? Can we? We all want change, but we want someone else to change, not us. Thankfully, over time, we've been able to successfully facilitate small groups of reformers and stakeholders in government and in the private sector in dialogue to garner some level of trust and help them understand how their actions affect other people, either positively or negatively, and the ripple effect to all of us in our one indivisible Nigerian economy. While manifold challenges remain, and the need for effective communication and consequence management is key, the PEVEC intervention has enjoyed some modest level of progress in our ease of doing business reform agenda, with a well-documented and verifiable track record of performance over the last five years. And perhaps because of this singular most important aspect of our work, striving for systemic reform through collaboration across stakeholders for our common goal of making Nigeria a progressively easier place to start and grow a business. However, this is not just a nice speech from someone currently serving in government. I'm here today as a Nigerian. I'm not here to patronize you. I will not attempt to placate you with empty euphemisms. Indeed, that would be a great disservice to this platform, to Pastor Poju, and to the members of the Covenant Nation who have sacrificed their resources and time to host this important forum consistently for over 16 years now. That will be disingenuous to you, my fellow Nigerians across this great nation and in the diaspora, especially on a day set aside for us to collectively remember where we are coming from, to scrutinize where we are now, and to try and grasp hope about where we are headed as a nation. I appreciate the privilege and opportunity given me to serve my country, and I'm grateful to have been invited to speak to Nigerians today, October 1st. What an honor. Thank you. When Pastor Poju reached out to me a few months ago to invite me to speak here today, I was at perhaps one of my lowest ebbs concerning Nigeria. Yet I accepted immediately, thanked him, and made him and myself an unsolicited promise that I would not waste this opportunity. There is no denying that our current reality looks bleak. We appear to be at a crossroads in our nation's history. The polity is heated up, politically charged. Violent crime is on increase, frequent kidnappings of children, senseless murders, and their persistent security challenges within and across geopolitical zones. The crippling foreign exchange rates, NSA's anniversary coming up soon. Many few politicians are six and half a dozen, all about selfish ambitions and positioning for the race to 2023. Much of the good work being done goes unnoticed, is resisted or ignored, unappreciated, a breakdown of trust and communication. Sometimes, even for the bravest of public officials, I suspect the state of the nation is extremely daunting in its relentless negativity and manifold challenges that seemingly defy all odds to resolve. It is not an easy job, but from inception, I knew what I signed up for and why. When things cut really deep, pain and frustration, two steps forward, three steps back. When courage appears to fail all around and change doesn't seem to happen at all, 
is painfully slow or actually unravels. When fear of futility attempts to overwhelm me and I've contemplated giving up and walking away, I'm reminded from deep within me that I cannot. I simply cannot give up on Nigeria. I cannot give up on Nigerians. Fear is the opposite of faith. Will I ever see the Nigeria of my dreams? I see the undeniable facts in front of me right now, but I know Nigeria shall be great. So I try to stay laser focused. I block out the negative noise, whatever the source. I guard my mental space fiercely, and I continue to work as hard as I can with an even greater sense of urgency because the time is short. I continue to hope and believe and give my life, my prime years, for Nigeria. There's a choice I have to make daily, a cross to pick up daily. Actually, a sustained hope is forged from choices, reminders, and mental decisions I have to make several times each day by his grace alone. How do we get hope in the midst of hopelessness? How do we encourage ourselves to go on? How do we forgive each other and not be paralyzed by bitterness? How do we build and grow together? Many Nigerians have switched off. Many have given up completely on Nigeria. Younger people are leaving the country in Joes, the Jakra. Welcome to the new dispensation. Older people are actively supporting and encouraging their children and mentees to emigrate as soon as possible. Go, there's nothing here for you. Nigeria is a land that kills dreams and eats its young. Strong emotions, powerful words, severing ties, actual and figurative actions of separation. Because as elite you can, but how many millions of Nigerians can? You are not wrong to be disheartened about the state of the nation. The pain and suffering is real. But I will still plead with you today that we all seek to respond and not to react to the crisis before us. Let us prepare for peace in time of war. Wherever you are, please do not turn your back on your country. Not in its hour of need, not in its hour of crisis, no matter what. Put on sackcloth, ashes, mourn, be angry, but do not sin. Do not make yourself, you were born a Nigerian, you did not make yourself one. And you remain one till the day you die. You cannot run, you cannot hide. It's just a fact. Please do not give up on Nigeria. Do not create a vacuum that lets others with ignoble intentions steal your God-given identity and birthright, the fat of the land. Don't make it so easy. Choose your own story. Create your own narrative about your country. Don't be a victim. Take responsibility. Take action. Be your own leader. Whatever we focus on gets magnified, whether negative or positive. And why should you bother? And why should I bother? Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you are made queen for just such a time as this. 
This was God's word to me in 2015 when I first came to Abuja to work with the Vice President. Today, I speak particularly to the crisis generation, our youth. You are by far our country's greatest asset as a nation. Perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Much as I would like to be able to say otherwise to you, the truth is that the journey will take first and foremost committed people, smart, hard work, tenacity, doggedness, knowledge, discipline, sacrifice, and time. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in one day, but then again, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The faster we work, the sooner we get the country we want. A look at the history of any great nation tells us that there are no magic wands in nation building. I made a commitment to myself a while back that I would be mindful not to ask of others what I have not done or committed to do myself. Before I ask you to give Nigeria another chance, I owe it to you to ask myself, what does Nigeria mean to me? What does the Nigerian anthem mean to me? The Nigerian pledge, the Nigerian flag. I've trained myself to love green. I love buying made in Nigeria products. To dress in world-class made in Nigeria fashion. To be proudly Nigerian. To be patriotic and loyal in my spoken words about my country. And not just when we are winning an international soccer competition or a Grammy Award. What do the Nigerian people mean to me, really? Not just those who look like me or speak my language, but the others. If I do not like and love Nigeria and Nigerians, then what is the point? What do I see for Nigeria in my imagination, in my mind's eye? Wakanda forever, the Black Panther movie. What do I say about Nigeria with my mouth? What do I believe in my heart? Do I really believe it? Do my actions match my thoughts and my words? What do I do for Nigeria? How do I serve? Love is action. Now fast forward to 2032, when Nigeria's history is being recounted regarding this current season. What would you have contributed? What positive, tangible things would you have actually done? What part would you have played in building your own nation? Not anyone else, you. Apathy, sharp criticism, constantly running negative armchair commentary on social media or with friends and family, making categorical statements with limited information, judging others, absolving self. I'm not responsible for the mess. I'm not guilty of any wrongdoing. I'm not corrupt. I'm not one of them. Or, I want to have other options in this time of my life, another passport. I'm not Nigerian anymore. But who are the people who form our society? You plus me equals we. The Nigerian assignment is a joint one. The responsibility is a collective one, positive or negative. The answer does not lie with any person or group of people. We. The answer that I am, the problem that I was born to solve for my country, the contribution only I can make, no one else can do it for me. No one else can do yours for you. My assignment will remain undone if I decide to leave it undone. And if I'm resolved to actively build my nation from wherever I am to play my part, what does nation building entail and how can I help build Nigeria? From here and now to there by then. 
I was recently persuaded that hope is indeed a strategy. It has to be. How do we get from where we are today to where we want to be without hope, without still believing we can, without faith? So, what seest thou? Let us see all men clearly. Let us open our eyes wide and see everything perfectly. Let our eyesight be completely restored. For me, how we got here today is not the issue. We are here. Many, many things have happened in the past 61 years of Nigeria's history. Many good things and many bad things. History is important, but living in a romanticized past, living on past glory, perpetual fault apportioning and division is not progressive or edifying. It can't be. I personally choose to reflect on being thankful for the good, thankful for how far we have come as a nation, even as I acknowledge we could have come much further. Taking responsibility for my own path, not perpetually blaming others, whose poisons, which poisons relationships and dissipates energies while changing nothing. I'm not in denial. I'm not absolving bad behavior. I simply choose to focus on the task at hand instead of how we can attain, instead on how we can attain a dramatically better future for ourselves, our children, and generations yet unborn. I'm fully persuaded that we are responsible for our collective future, good or bad, because together we have the power to do and undo. We are not helpless victims, unless we choose to be. By now, no doubt, some people listening to me may be thinking I sound extremely naive. Does she really know Nigeria? Does she know this country? Does she know who we are? All that has happened. What those people did to us. What I lost. How all my life dreams were dashed. The fire, the rubble, the desolation. I know. And what I also know with certainty is that we cannot move forward and attain the Nigeria we say we want without letting go of the toxins, changing our mindsets, and rebuilding the walls and gates of our nation together. None of us can clap with one hand. Not everyone will come along, but to me, our journey to the new starts with this basic step now. We cannot take hold of the future while holding on to the past still, or even the present. Nigeria has had many missed opportunities. We've been known for our great potential for well over our 61 years post-independence. We have to dare to attain it. Now, in some of the most poignant words gifted to the world by William Shakespeare centuries ago, which remain particularly relevant to us today, there is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. How? The starting point, three quick illustrations. How do we start to take ownership and action to radically transform our nation? The great developed nations of the world today are not better than we are. Their people are not more talented or more brilliant and there are few countries more blessed with such an array of diverse natural resources as this great land. However, we know from history that there are a handful of timeless and tried, tested values that have been exhibited by nation builders in great nations over centuries. To reform a society, I must first reform myself. To me, it's as simple as that. 
So the first one, have integrity. Personal righteousness first, then collective righteousness exalts a nation. Let us each determine in our hearts to walk with integrity daily as Nigerians. To decide individually and collectively to do what we know we ought to do. What we know is right, no matter the personal cost in the short run. Let us have boldness and courage to be the change we wish to see in the nation. Stop doing the things that we know are wrong. That everyone is doing it is no excuse. Reformers don't follow the crowd. Make integrity a habit. Do the right thing. Make a good choice always. Whether small or big decisions, do the right thing all the time, even when you think no one is watching. It doesn't make us foolish. It makes us great. Serve with excellence. Leave the selfishness, envy, and strife at the door for the sake of the collective good. Even when it costs you personally, personal sacrifice for the collective good. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. President John F. Kennedy said this at his 1961 inauguration speech. He paid the price for reforming his country through extremely turbulent times with his life, which is why we're still talking about him today. I sometimes hear many Nigerians at home and abroad say to me with pity, Jimoke, I love Nigeria, but I can never work in government. And then they go on to lament about all the things that are wrong with the government and with Nigeria. So if you don't do it, who should? To love Nigeria is to build Nigeria. To love Nigeria is to serve Nigerians with your A game in your productive years. Even those who are not like us. We can disagree or have divergent views on issues, on outlooks, on religious beliefs without hating each other, without killing one another. Resist negativity and apathy, one finger pointing at another, four pointing back at us. Let us lay down our pride, humble ourselves, take personal responsibility, accountability, and serve with excellence. What can I do? Love is action. Nigerians are exceptionally high achievers in every field all across the world. Let us all together decide to put aside our differences and to do whatever good work it takes with excellence and integrity and loyalty to replicate this excellence at home to fix our own country. Our work is our citizenship. Finally, be a revolutionary, a visionary reformer. Reformers are creative innovators Agenda setters, global leaders with excellence from homegrown ideas. We must prove ourselves capable of organizing our nation into a meritocracy, devoid of ethnicity and nepotism and religious strife for the sake of the common good. To lead with our best 11 stepping up to the plate to be counted, to harness our vast human and natural resources maximally. As a nation, we should not blindly imitate others with their own faults, mistakes, and hypocrisy. We learn, and we take ownership and responsibility for our own destiny. No time for small dreams. Leadership is a choice to take responsibility, to sacrifice, to serve. If you are watching this, then you are a leader, an elite in Nigeria. Great leaderships requires selfless service with integrity. When the leaders lead, the followers will follow. In conclusion, it is often said that our mobile phones today have more computing power 
than the computer aboard Apollo 11 did when humans landed for the first time on the moon. Yet half a century later, the event is still one of the most significant achievements of mankind. As Neil Armstrong took his first step, he famously said, that's one small step for man and one giant step for mankind. Today, we know that space travel has been commercialized. This speaks to the power of vision. If we can imagine it, then we can achieve it. In Nigeria, we have the plans, we have the structures, we know what to do. What we lack is more committed people across all areas of nation building. None of us is exempt. No us and them. We are the people, we are the Nigerians, collectively. There's no one else. When the dirty water splashes, it splashes on us all. Let us remind ourselves today that other nations have walked more difficult journeys, and some of them have come through more than all right. With the right people, both leaders and followers, with the right mindset and the right actions, 10 years is enough to transform the trajectory of every single facet of this nation and to have us firmly on the path of a developed nation in perpetuity. Yes, the audacity of hope. We should have no time for small dreams. As President Barack Obama once said, in the face of impossible odds, people who love this country can change it. When Nigeria gets it right, Africa gets it right. We have to build the Nigeria that we want to see. No one else can or will do it for us. It is realistic, it is possible, it is achievable. Nigeria is on an exponentially positive developmental trajectory within 10 years, if we talk less, fight less, and instead wish less, and instead do more collaborative smart work. It's a choice, a decision that we each have to make to take our place, to pay the price in the highest capacity we can, whatever that looks like for each of us. There's no shortcut. Now, not later. If our nation is to be more developed in a decade's time, across all key development indicators, and greater than it has ever been before. The glory of the latter day shall be greater than that of the former. I believe God. I'm not looking back. I'm not dwelling on the current. I've fast forwarded to the future. I'm already in 2032. And I'm ready to pay my price daily. The answer lies within us. No matter how few of us, it's okay. We can do it. We can start today. The world awaits us and the time is now. We are the women and men who built Nigeria. We are the ones whom we seek. Happy Independence Day. I truly love you.